Apple may be about to cancel the iPhone 15. Some models of the 2023 iPhone lineup might not be making the final cut. Apple really needs to bring their A-game this year, as competition in this space heats up more than ever before, and they really have to make the 15 line stand out and be innovative and exciting, and not just sort of the same old thing. I mean, you tell me which one of these is the newer 14, and which one's the old 13. Can't innovate anymore, my <laughs> Apple is starting the new year with some pretty big problems. So let me tell you about Apple's secret plan to save the iPhone, how they're going to make the 15 better, how they're really going to make it, or at least try to compete uh, best they can with the Android flagships of the year, and also why some of the most popular iPhones ever are about to get canceled. Seriously, looks like this is actually gonna happen. It seems like every time we make a video about a new upcoming iPhone, there's one comment that I see over and over again, something along the lines of, Apple is finally catching up to what Android has been doing for years. You're late again, Apple. And I like to poke fun, but even as a longtime Apple fan, I agree. A lot of the times, especially lately, that statement is kind of true. Apple has always taken the strategy that they're not gonna be the first to do something generally, but when they do introduce a feature, they do it better or in a more revolutionary and magical way than anyone else has thought of. And in a lot of ways that has been true over and over again, but recently it seems like they've just been sort of late to implement some pretty standard features. Like why did it take this long to get a blown up version of the weather app on the iPad? How is this really revolutionary? And also many have said, rightfully so, that Apple's take on the always-on display is actually in a lot of ways worse than what Android has been doing for years. And I'm not looking to dunk on Apple in this video, I think they do a lot of amazing things year after year, but lately it seems like their priorities have not really been in the order that many people want them to be, and what we've seen from the iPhone 14, and really the iPhone 14 Plus, sales have been bad, like really bad, worse than what Apple expected, and the sales of iPhone 14 models might be so bad that Apple is about to make some drastic changes to the iPhone 15 that as far as we can tell, at least in modern Apple history, they've never done before. Making things particularly worse is the iPhone 14 Plus because this seemed, in theory, like a winner of a phone. It gave you all the benefits of the Pro Max, the big 6.7 inch OLED display that was really bright and vibrant. You had excellent battery life, some great cameras, great processor, all the best of the Pro Max minus the Pro features. But what we've seen now time and time again is it's kind of the opposite. It is a major loser for Apple. In many cases, some are saying worse than what the Mini sold uh, during its two year stint as part of the iPhone lineup. In fact, things are looking so bad for the plus sized iPhone that we're now hearing that there's some talk inside of Cupertino that they might just cancel that phone altogether, taking the number of iPhone 15 models from four down to three. But now, according to rumors, the iPhone 15 lineup might not look like this, but more like this. You'd have a 15, you'd have a 15 Pro, and then a 15 Ultra. That's it, only one base iPhone. But the bad news does not stop there because another seemingly uber popular iPhone model, the iPhone SE, is set to not get a new edition in 2023 or 2024. In fact, it seems like the iPhone SE 4 might not be postponed, but maybe canceled altogether. Remember that we had heard for a while that Apple was going to bring some big changes to their lower and more budget friendly phone, that the iPhone SE 4 was gonna get an iPhone 11 style redesign. It was gonna be a little bit more modern. It would ditch the home button. It would have a notch for Face ID. You could get a, a bigger screen. It was set to be a pretty substantial upgrade for that price point, but now according to Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, whether it was due to some economic concerns or budgetary concerns, or just the fact that the phone would be too expensive to build, this phone has seemingly been canceled, and it seems, according to right now, what we're hearing is that Apple has no plans to make an iPhone SE 4, at least not any time in the next two to three years. So yeah, some major shakeups are happening in the iPhone lineup, and I've got a couple of ideas on what Apple could do, and I've got some rumors on what Apple is planning to do, but before I dive into that, I wanna ask you guys, what are your thoughts on the iPhone lineup as it stands? What are your thoughts on these issues? And more importantly, if you were in Tim Cook's chair, so to speak, what would you do to fix the iPhone? My two cents on this, which I don't really think is a very controversial take, is that the price of the iPhone lineup is not good. The price of the 14 Plus in particular is too high, 
And I don't think that the price of the Pro phones is necessarily out of line. Apple loves to sort of have premium, higher and more expensive phones. But when you look at the lineup as it stands right now, there's only a $200 difference between a 14 and a 14 Pro, or a 14 Plus versus a 14 Pro Max. And for so many people, that $200 goes a long way in getting them way more exciting features. You get a phone that looks different with the Dynamic Island, you're getting more cameras, you're getting the always on display, you're getting promotion, you're getting the new chip. There's a lot to love in the Pro and iPhones, as the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus are sort of boring, underwhelming phones. And pricing, I think in a lot of ways is hurting Apple in this instance, because in one hand, it's a good thing because more people are spending more money to go with the Pro phones. But on the other hand, no one wants to buy the 14 or the 14 Plus because they're just sort of underwhelming compared to what you could get for just $200 more. One thing Apple could do with the iPhone 15 line if they wanted to keep the Plus size around was to do some juggling with the price and make a bigger gap between the non-Pro iPhones and the Pro iPhones, whether that is raising the Pro prices, which I hope they don't do, but that wouldn't be out of line for Apple. That's one way they could go. Or it's just gonna be lowering the price of the standard iPhone 15. Maybe instead of the lineup starting at $799, it starts at $699. So there's a $300 difference between the Pro and non-Pro phones. Maybe it's some kind of incentive or discounts on the those lower end phones, or maybe Apple does what they sort of have been known to do, and that is raise prices on their higher and more exclusive phones. Not sure what direction they're going to take, but it looks like there's gonna be some pricing adjustments happening uh, in 2023 with the upcoming iPhone 15 line. Not sure if it's gonna be three phones or four phones, but some big changes are going to happen. And according to different reports and analysts discussions and all the different things we're hearing from the Apple rumor mill right now, it seems like Apple is gonna do three major things to try to save the iPhone 15, get it more popular, and get things moving back in the right direction. First thing they're set to do is give the iPhone 15 some kind of substantial redesign because it's been a while since the iPhone has really gotten any noticeable massive design change. I mean, if you look at the lineup, the 10, 10S, 11, 11 were all sort of the same, 12, 13, 14 were all the same. Really, it's been since the iPhone 10 that we got any kind of jaw-dropping difference in the style of the iPhone, but hopefully that is going to change this year with the iPhone 15 line and its new design. The second thing Apple is set to do to save the iPhone 15 line is give some more exclusive pro features to the higher end phones, but also bring a lot of good features down to the iPhone 15. One of the big criticisms of 2022 was that the 14 and 14 plus didn't get a whole lot of new features, but that should luckily not be the case with the 15 and maybe the 15 plus. The regular 15 is actually shaping up to be a pretty exciting phone. It's supposed to have a cutting edge city of the art Sony image sensor. A new rumor suggests that we could see the 48 megapixel main camera from the 14 Pro go to the regular 15 next year. We should be getting USB-C. Finally, the A16 Bionic processor, better battery life, and the Dynamic Island should be moving from the Pro iPhones to every single iPhone 15 next year. So even if you just buy the base cheapest 15, you're gonna get the Dynamic Island on your regular non-Pro iPhone. And move number three Apple is going to make to make the 15 more exciting is sort of something I alluded to a minute ago, and that is to make the 15 Pro more exclusive and more exciting. What we're hearing right now is that Apple might have two Pro and iPhones, the 15 Pro and the 15 Ultra, that would both pack some exclusive features you can't get on the non-Pro iPhones. Always on display, promotion, better cameras, three cameras on both of these, and then possibly on the 15 Ultra, you would have things like the optical uh, zoom being increased with the new uh, telephoto system that might give you 10x optical zoom on the highest end iPhone. Those phones may also get a titanium body. They would get a new, possibly a 17 equipped chip inside and also solid state buttons uh, replacing physical buttons on the side and then maybe Thunderbolt speeds for the USB-C port on the bottom for super fast data transferring from your iPhone to your computer. So again, let me ask you guys the question, what are your thoughts on the iPhone 15 line? What do you think that Apple could do to make these phones more exciting? Do you think there's some new technology they could implement? Do you think they're not uh, getting into the folding phone space fast enough? Do you think they're sort of uh, doing things a little bit too conservatively? Should they be more exciting and more innovative? Or uh, do you think that Apple is heading in the right direction? And again, what would you fix with the 14? Do you think there should be a 15 plus? Should there not be? Should there be three phone models, four phone models, five phone models? Let me know your thoughts on the 15 lineup down below. As always, I appreciate you guys watching the Apple Circle. Thank you so much. Happy New Year to you all. Thank you for all the support as always. I appreciate it. I read your comments. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I will see you all 
in the next one. Thank you.